the SEIR model contains a few parameters, so for each set of parameters our solution will look differently. Remarkably, however, the qualitative features are the same for each set of parameters. And in this video you will see how the solution of an SIRR model looks like and we will also see where the weakness is in the model and possible ways to resolve it. So, what was our model again? With the differential equation for the STT, the uh, EDT, the IDT and the RDT with uh, parameters alpha and gamma and beta. Now, how does the solution look like? Let's first look at the start of an epidemic. In this case you have that almost everyone is susceptible, so S of N is approximately equal to 1. Now in the remainder, uh, we always have S plus E plus I plus R equals uh, N is, uh, is constant, so we only have to look at uh, three of the differential equations, then say R follows from that. Um, uh, and in this case uh, we say well the uh, S of N is approximately equal to 1. Uh, so we uh, don't look at the susceptibles, but only at the exposed and the infected. So, well, uh, the susceptibles, almost everyone is still susceptible. What do we get if we set S over N to 1? Here we get the, uh, uh, beta times I minus alpha times E. And here uh, we just get the same. Hey, but that's nice. Then we have a system of uh, uh, two differential equations, but a linear system. So we can solve the linear system analytically, uh, explicitly, using some linear algebra. We can it rewrite in the form uh, x prime equals a times x. So what, uh, what do we get if you do that? We have the DDT of uh, e and i matrix A, which contains these parameters beta and alpha times uh, e times i. So it's of the form x prime equals a times x. How do you solve it? How do you see whether solutions are stable or not? Uh, you look at the eigenvalues. So compute the eigenvalues, I put a minus lambda here and a minus lambda there, and compute the determinant as usual. So you get minus alpha minus lambda times minus gamma minus lambda minus alpha beta equals zero. So we get an expression for lambda. Now what we actually want to know is whether lambda is positive or negative. If you have a positive lambda you will get exponential growth and we'll get an epidemic. If, you, if uh, all lambdas are negative, uh, then you will get exponential decay and the result is not so interesting. Well, not so interesting from a mathematical viewpoint. So uh, we are mainly interested to see whether we have positive lambdas. So let us study the lambdas. It's a bit difficult because there are parameters involved here. So compute the discriminant. That's uh, b squared minus 4 times a times b over here. Uh, Work out the brackets, you get a squared plus two, two times a times, sorry, alpha squared plus two times alpha times gamma plus gamma squared. And from here, we get a four alpha beta minus four alpha gamma. Uh, so we see we can uh, take these two terms together. We get alpha squared minus two alpha gamma plus gamma squared plus four alpha beta. And the first three terms can be taken together as alpha minus gamma squared plus four alpha beta which is positive. So our discriminant is positive, which means that we will have two uh, real eigenvalues. Moreover, the product of your eigenvalues is always the uh, constant term here. Uh, uh, how, how, uh, how can you see that? Well, if you write your polynomial, if you factorize it as lambda minus lambda plus times lambda minus lambda minus, you get a lambda squared, uh, plus a, a mixed term and uh, the constant term will be lambda plus times lambda minus and this constant term has to be equal to minus alpha times beta minus gamma. So there you go. So the product of your two eigenvalues is this number here which is given in terms of your parameters. Now why is this, uh, uh, why, why is this important? Well our beta will be bigger than gamma uh, so that means that we will, will have a larger spread, so the epidemic is spreading faster than that people are recovering. So if beta is bigger than gamma, uh, alpha is of course positive, all parameters are positive, then this quantity over here 
is uh, negative. So if the product lambda plus times lambda minus is negative, so that means that the eigenvalues have a different sign, uh, which means that your uh, biggest eigenvalue lambda has to plus has to be positive, and lambda minus is negative. So in this case, you will start with an exponential growth due to the due to your positive eigenvalue lambda plus. See how important your beta is already here. As, as long as beta, your beta is bigger than gamma, you get this exponential growth. Um, no, so that's what's happening at the start, exponential growth. Then let's take a look what's happening at the end. Then S of n is approximately equal to zero. So what do we get then? And then the, uh, uh, the, the, the EDT over here, this term drops out, so you get the minus alpha e. Uh, the IDT is still the same. So you can uh, again write your system as differential equations as x prime equals a times x. Now this is matrix A over here. You can read off immediately your eigenvalues. They are minus alpha and minus gamma. So they are both negative. So by the end of the epidemic, you will have an exponential decay. So eventually, whatever you do, you will always go into a phase of exponential decay due to your negative eigenvalues. Now, uh, what's, what's happening uh, somewhere in between? So you start to grow and you go down. Can you get some, some wiggles in this, this, this system? Or do you go up and then down? So what's going to happen? So well, uh, in the middle, uh, somewhere, you will have some maximum where the number of uh, the EDT and the IDT is maximal. So the, the EDT, uh, sorry, the number of E and I is maximal. So the EDT is zero and the IDT is zero. Well, if that's the case, uh, let's go. Let's go back uh, to the to our system. If uh, the IDT is zero, then you have this term uh, has to be zero over here. So you have gamma i is approximately alpha e, and for the other one, you get beta times s times i of n is approximately alpha times the number of exposed. Now, if you combine these, you get uh, that your this gamma e is approximately equal to this one, because these are also equal. And if you solve them for s over n, you get s over n is approximately gamma over beta. So the number of infected i is maximal if s over n is approximately equal to gamma over beta. So you will sit, find at a certain point a maximum uh, in between. So you start growing, you go down eventually, your maximum is... If the fraction of people which are infected is approximately equal to gamma over beta. So how does it look? You start to grow exponentially, you find some maximum, and you go down again. For all sets of parameters, alpha, beta, and gamma you put in, you get some, some sort of behavior of this, of your number of infected as a function of time. So let's summarize what's going to happen. You start with exponential growth. You reach your maximum, and at that point you will have uh, have achieved herd immunity, because after that, whatever you do, you will get exponential decay. Now, sounds easy enough. So, uh, are there any problems with it? Well, yes, because uh, remember, our parameter beta, we assumed constant alpha and gamma. That is more or less fine, because they are related to uh, incubation periods, period uh, duration of infection, can't do too much about that. But your parameter beta, again, is important. It, it gives the number of contacts uh, per person per day times the chance that such a contact leads to an infection. Uh, so what's the problem with this beta? We put it to a constant, but first of all, it's not constant in time. So if there are a large number of infections, people will always try to uh, lower the number of contacts and this chance that SI uh, leads to an infection um, people are also trying to lower that for example by uh, uh, keeping some distance so this this uh, this beta is, is difficult it's not constant in time and it can be different in different regions already in different regions of the Netherlands so you have special heterogeneity so in order to get a real really good model for this you will, you will need to take these two effects certainly under, into account, otherwise don't believe your model, and that this will be uh, a challenge.